Alright, we're looking, uh, remember, at, at two dimensional now uh, states of equilibrium, which means for us, well, it's true of three dimensional as well, uh, but we only have two equations of equilibrium, and they bu must both be satisfied for uh, whatever object we're looking at to be in equilibrium. Typically what we do is we put in the forces we do know, set the equilibrium condition, and then use that to find the forces we don't know. And we did that, we started that with about the simplest problems we can do. Um, a simply loaded beam, the only way this could be simpler is if the force was right on this in the center, then you could probably see immediately then that the two reaction forces, the two support forces, the forces supplied by the two supports then would have to be uh, equal because of symmetry if the if the load was right in the center. Um, most of you, would have come up with that right away without a, without a whole lot of uh, thinking about it. But as it is, we have to put those in. Remember, we take out the type of support and replace it with the forces that it's supplying. These are reaction forces, remember. Since there's a load on the beam, the beam pushes down on the supports and those push back in reactions. So we actually call those reactions. And you'll, you'll get problems where they'll say, uh, for the beam as shown, find the reactions. And that's what you're supposed to do, is find the support forces uh, that are supplied by the, the physical supports that are actually holding the beam up. Remember, uh, our beams are inelastic. They do not deform at all. So we don't have to worry about any of, the, any of the different shape kind of things that go on and problems those could cause. We'll look into that next term in strength of materials where things will actually deform. In fact, that'll be the whole, the, the main basis of that uh, term. And then, uh, uh, unless also stated otherwise, our beams themselves we consider to be massless. We'll look at what that does to a problem shortly, but for right now we assume they're massless, and unless it's said otherwise, you always assume that for this. All right, so uh, we didn't quite finish this problem, I don't think. We, we just got to where we're finishing setting things up. Um, some of the forces in the x direction, we only have one, so it must be zero. Uh, it must identically be zero. Um, nothing more you can do with that one. Uh, don't forget though that uh, you've got to state that. That's part of the solution as well. That determines actually the direction of the reaction force at A because what we have listed here is the two components of it. So we do need to know everything about that force. Some of the forces in the Y direction uh, remember my suggestion, since our sums always go to zero, is that you set them up that all of the up forces equal all the down forces. Then there's no minus signs, but that's just algebra to make things a little easier. Sometimes the minus signs are what get a little bit sticky in problems. So uh, in this case then, it's just the up forces equal the down forces. One equation, two unknowns, we're not done yet, and then we pull in the uh, moment equation. That must also uh, satisfy equilibrium so that there's no, uh, that then our beam would be in complete full support. But remember what is it about the moment that must be identified? I love to, I love to 
little space here is a clue. No? And for two-dimensional problems, the moment's only in the z-direction anyway. There's just no other possibility. The, a reference point. These are moments caused by these forces with respect to some point. But the moment everywhere must be satisfied, must be, the, the, the moment equilibrium must be satisfied everywhere. So it doesn't matter which point you pick. If it happens that one point's easier to use mathematically than another, then by all means choose that one. But it doesn't matter. You do have to let me know what it is. Uh, typically, you look for things like the more unknown forces that go through one of the points, the easier the mathematics is if you choose that point. Or if there happens to be a particularly sticky force of some kind, or one you don't even need. If you don't even need a force, then by all means pick the point there, and then it's not even in the equations. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same either way. Uh, the physics isn't going to depend on that. So just for demonstration purposes, we'll pick A because we have two forces that go through there. Even though we know now one is zero, we might not have known that ahead of time. So with point A as our reference point, again, my suggestion, all clockwise moments, that force would tend to make a clockwise moment about A. This force would tend to make a counterclockwise moment about A. All the clockwise moments equals all the counterclockwise ones, and you just don't get any uh, negative signs in your equation. And just, just a little bit simpler. So uh, the force times the moment arm, conveniently, it's already perpendicular to the distance between them. Makes it pretty easy. So 2 kilonewtons times 3 meters is the clockwise moment. It's got to equal the counterclockwise one. If not, then there'll be angular acceleration, and we don't want that. So uh, B is unknown, and its moment arm is 5 meters. It's pretty easy to accidentally just put down the 2. But remember, this is from point A. So the moment arm is the full five meters. And then this one can be finished up. Uh, what is that? Six fifths or 1.2? Did I do something wrong? You're frowning. You saw like my handwriting today? 1.2 and the units have got to work. So we know B must support 1.2 kilonewtons. If you're actually designing this, of course, you're going to make it substantially more than that because you want a factor of safety in there. You don't want something to go wrong and it fails and you're, uh, you're getting nailed for that. Then we can go back up here and finish this one. So uh, AY equals 0.8 kilonewtons. I did that right in my head and, we're, and that's it. So that's the simplest of all problems, finding the reactions, and that's how we do it. Just all the changes now is the problems get more and more involved. So let's make them more and more involved. Everybody okay with that? Erase it now. Just going to change it a little bit. We won't even work through the solution because. Because it'll be, uh, it'll be okay. All right. Let's say this support here is a little bit different. Still on a roller over there. Remember, we don't want to pin down that end too, because then we have no flexibility as things change a little bit. Plus, we don't have enough equations. We only have three equations in two dimensions. So we'll set that on a slight angle. Let's say it's, uh, what did I have here, 30 degrees. Which could be maybe you're making a 
deck against the side of the house or something is how you decide to do it. Does that change anything? Does that change the support at A that's required? Do we have to redesign A because of this slope? Do we have to make it a little beefier or make it work in different? Well, that's what we're, we're going to find out. So first thing, free body diver. And if you've got room on the page, it doesn't hurt to make these lined up and right below the diagram you got going into it. Just less likely to make a mistake that way, uh, especially with some of the stuff we have coming up later. So we still have the tilt two kilonewtons. The distances are still the same. Clearly, that's not an equilibrium yet because there's only a downforce. We need some up forces. So, uh, what do I draw in for uh, now the support at A? Same thing. Same thing I had before. That, what I draw in here, when I take out the support and put in the forces they supply, I put in the same thing that's in the table in the book for whatever type of support I had. Simple pin support is going to supply a horizontal and a vertical component. It's the easiest way to do it. Uh, or you can put in that it's got some magnitude and angle, but then it makes it harder to solve the equations. What about it B? All this roller is going to be able to do is exert a force normal to itself. So there's going to be now a force at some slight angle like that, in fact, at 30 degrees. Now how many unknowns are there? Can we solve this problem? Remember, we only have three equations. Can we solve this problem? Yes. How many unknowns are there? That's, that's all you can ask. We only have three equations. We better not have more than three unknowns or we can't do this problem. These are still unknown. We're not sure they'll be the same as in the other problem. That's what we got to find out. So there's two unknowns. Is there two unknowns here? Is it AR still being from Well, it was before because there was no horizontal component. Now we have a horizontal component over here. Those two need to match. Think about what this what this deck, uh, whatever this girder would do, if you did put one end against a, a, a roof or a hillside or something, it's going to tend to slip that way as it rolls off the roof. So we are going to need some horizontal component to hold it there. You have, you have four unknowns, but AX is going to equal negative B, or is going to equal BX? And, um, if we have four unknowns, there's no sense going any farther. Because if we, if all we can say is they're equal, that still doesn't solve for them. Saying they're equal isn't enough. We need to say what they're equal to, what value. That's what we're, we're looking for, the actual values here. So continue to design and make sure we make it beefy enough. How about B-Y is known? It's 1,200 newtons. No, that was the other problem. This is a new design. Maybe that happens to be the same. Still requires the same thing, or else it's going to move. Right? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to change the design and use values from the old design and just carry them over. Especially, I'm hesitant to do that if we don't need to. If we can solve this problem, let's solve this problem as is. How many unknowns are there? 
two here. Maybe they're the same as before, maybe they're not. We're going to find out. How many unknowns here? It's a vector. We need to know both the magnitude and the direction. We already have the direction. It's only the magnitude we don't know. We already have the direction. It's 30 degrees. So we only have three unknowns. Both of those and just the magnitude. We know the angle already. So we can solve this one. And you can break that into the two components if you want and then solve it. Uh, the steps are very much the same. Um, turns out that uh, AX is not zero. As you can get just feeling this problem, if we didn't hold it that way, it would roll off the hillside. So AX is it's not very big. And you can confirm these. You just go through the solutions, you know, some of the equations. AY uh, is about the same 0.8 kilonewtons, and B is uh, 1.4. So AX is no longer zero. What that means is we couldn't put a roller here, too. We couldn't have that kind of setup. There's no horizontal support there. The whole thing would just roll away, <coughs> which is fine if in-laws you don't like are on it. But and there's plenty of those, usually. All right, so you check and make sure you get those numbers or something close to them and we move on to harder problems. So be careful, especially on minor design changes. Be careful about carrying through values from the old design. Uh, may or may not be the case. If nothing changes, then why bother with a new design? Okay. So we'll leave those two things up there. If you'd like to, of course, you can get a tattoo uh, that shows those, that way you don't have to look them up in a test. But that's all there is, that's all we got. That's why we make this class uh, open no open books, because that's all there is. Alright, so here's, here's another setup. This time we have a wall into which we've embedded a beam of some kind. However, part way in, there's a partition or something. And then we got a couple forces on it, of course. Midway here, 200 pounds. Hundred pounds there at thirty degrees. Luckily, Mother Nature does nothing but fifteen, thirty, forty-five, and sixty degree angles. Oh, and ninety. And uh, and by whatever means, maybe there's a a pulley there, or a motor, or a, a, a fan belt, or something that's running there. There's an applied moment. Of 300 foot pounds right there. And then everything's two feet. Two feet. Two feet. Even the partitions, two feet. And that last free end there is two feet. Okay, so whatever whatever that is, maybe that 100 pounds is, uh, is wind load or somebody runs into it and hits it like that or something. Who knows? That's not the point. drawing up to date. Choose beautiful colors like I do. So you have pride in your drawing and it kind of looks like an Easter drawing because it's so pretty and the colors chosen. 
part of the black and red. Don't make them too small. We got some work to do here on these. Don't make them too small. You're not getting paid for how much paper you save. You're getting paid for how many problems you get right. That's that's not actually supposed to be a three-dimensional moment symbol there, right? It's just it's counterclockwise. Yeah, well it's it's three-dimensional. I just can't draw that. So I draw that. You know that that's the moment vector for that is out of the board. So that's just the way we draw it for for two uh, D. There are some uh, some some books we used to do this in physics. I don't see it as often anymore. They'll draw a uh, a vector out of the board is just a dot, but then we'll usually put a circle around it just to show. So that would be a vector out of the board. As if you're looking down the arrow, you'll see the little arrow point. And a vector into the board looks like that because you're looking now at the tail feathers is, is the idea. It's those for actual arrows. But I think this works just as well. Uh, but you can use either. Just don't do both. That's going to screw you up royal. Okay, first thing we need is a free body diagram because we don't have all the forces in the picture yet. We have a wall in the picture, but not the forces it exerts. All right, some of the forces, they just go right back in anyway. That's not going to change any. It's up to you how much you want to put in there. Maybe you want the dimensions back in there. Maybe you want to keep it clean. All right, that's just the loads. Just putting the loads back in. They're still on the free body diagram. taken away the wall, we have to put in the forces it supplied. It's actually those we're looking for. We're looking for the reaction forces at the wall so we can make sure that the wall's big enough and the attachment's big enough and everything so this, this uh, particular thing, whatever it is, doesn't fail. What forces are supplied by that kind of support? If you're not sure, you might not be because we're new to this, check your book. Remember there's that table in there and it shows what supports are supplied by what kind of, what kind of forces are supplied by what kind of supports. If somebody wouldn't mind giving me a book, I'll put it up for everybody. Why should that change, huh, Bill? Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, it's not a cable. It's not a smooth roller. It's not a rough roller. Not a roller support. It's not a freely sliding guide. So it's not that page. Good thing we have more pages. Bill brought all the pages in his book. Let's see what we got. There it is. It's uh, number seven there. Built in or fixed support. When you draw something simple like that, that's just what we mean. I'm not going to draw every time that it's built in. I'm not going to draw the welds every time. You just got to figure what I got there is exactly as good as you can simple. So it supplies a vertical force. This V doesn't actually stand for vertical. Uh, well, maybe it does. 
Uh, it's a shear force. We're going to see what that means in a little bit. Uh, supplies some kind of horizontal component. And it also supplies a moment. If you look at what this beam, uh, the forces are trying to, uh, well, one's trying to push it down, one's trying to turn it, one's trying to pull it up and over and down. There's, it's, those forces are trying to pull it out of the wall, pull it down the wall maybe, depends on what they all add to, but it's also trying to twist this whole thing. And the wall support is meant to keep it from twisting. That's why we embed it or weld it or do whatever else it is we need to do to it. If we only had this kind of support at that wall, remember that's my symbol for a simply pinned support, it's just a hinge. That might not work here. Remember, we assume this to be massless, but the forces themselves are enough that that could cause that thing to either go down or go up. It depends on what the nature of all these loads are. So we embed it in the wall or we weld it to the wall or we bolt it to the wall or whatever so that it doesn't turn either. We don't want it to come out. We don't want it to go down. We don't want it to turn. So we put in those kind of uh, loads. Maybe we know something about the direction, can figure out what we got going. We've got 200 down and substantially less than 100 up. So we're going to need some more up for us. If we, if we can know ahead of time, we might as well guess and, and get it right. That just means fewer minus signs. Remember though, if you guess wrong, the solution just comes out with a minus sign and just tells you you put it in the wrong direction. It's not a big deal. So don't spend too much effort on, on predicting what they're doing. But if you can, you can. Um, we have a bit of force pulling it to the right. So we know the wall has got to pull it back to the left. We can, we can confidently make that prediction. Again, it's not a big deal. If we guess wrong, and we're going to have some coming up where we can't possibly know, we'll guess wrong. Uh, now, uh, in terms of the moment supplied by that, the, the anti-twisting forces it's supplying to the twisting forces on end, uh, that'll pull it down, that'll kind of pull it up, that'll turn around, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell, so we'll just guess. I'll just guess. If I'm wrong, it's a minus sign when we do the solution. Simple as that. So no great fear, but if we can, uh, if we can do without it, all for better. Any other forces or loads in the problem? Because we don't have them all, we're doing the wrong problem. What about the weight of the beam? Unless told otherwise, you take it to be masses. You have to use that when you're imagining some kinds of problems. When I just had that pinned one up there, you would have thought, well, that's just going to fall down on its own, but remember it's massless. So in, in our world, if that didn't have any load on it, it would stay there, which is kind of like, sometimes I wish we did live in our world. All right, what's next? Got all the forces. Start, yeah, start summing the forces. If, if, uh, if you want to start in the x direction, got to do them all, probably have to do them all. Um, so we'll just go through them and get them all. So any, any left forces have got to equal any right forces. So we have a left AX. Uh, no other leftward forces must equal the rightward part of that, which is 100 pounds times cosine 30. Uh, and that's all we got. So there, we already got part of it done. There's AX.
86, 87 pounds, give or take a little bit. Remember, uh, the exact value is not a great concern because if you were building this and you wanted it to hold 87 pounds, you would actually design it and build it so it held at least twice that just to make sure. So you might design and build this for 200 or 250 pounds if this is what the maximum load is that we anticipate. All right, so part way done. We can only solve for three unknowns anyway, and we've got three, they're all right there. So we just keep going. Up forces equal down forces. AY is up. The other part of that diagonal force is up. Just a component of it, it's a sine 30. And they've got to equal the 200 down. Keep your units in there. It's not like these are terribly difficult equations, so don't get lazy with them. Does that look right? All the up forces equal all the down forces. That's all that says. So we can solve for AY. See, these aren't too difficult. Heck, maybe they're even fun. So that should be, and we got it, 150? 150. Okay, good. In numbers. All right, so now we know those two reactions. Uh, the only thing now we need to figure out what moment that needs to hold. Uh, that's where we'd figure out just how strong the weld needs to be maybe, or we'd, uh, how many bolts we need to put in there. That's the type of thing we'll finish up with uh, the next term. So, some of the moments, about some point. A. It gets those two forces out of the moment equation. Not a big deal. We do know them, but it does simplify the equation. We could pick anywhere, but if we pick someplace, like if we picked right here, only one force goes through there. There's just more complication. There's just more math to do. If we judiciously pick our spot, then some of the math drops out, but all the physics stays put. Uh, what if we picked it about this spot? Because that's right where that moment's acting. What would that do for us? If we picked that end. Because we can pick any end. The moment's got to sum to zero everywhere. We picked it there. What drops out and what doesn't drop out? Does AX drop out? Yeah, because its line of action goes right to that point. Uh, does AY drop out? No. Does M drop out? No. And we wouldn't want it to anyway. We've got to solve for M. We sure wouldn't want it to disappear anyway. Uh, 200 doesn't drop out because its line of action doesn't go through that point. Same with the 100. Does this drop out? If we choose our point right there, does the 300 drop out? The 300 foot pound drop out? No, it does not. It's an easy mistake to make because it kind of looks yummy like it would be a good choice and makes some stuff yeah. drop out. But what did I tell you? Remember I said forces are sliding vectors. What did I say about moments? They're free vectors. So you can't make that go away by picking some point near it or in it. Because that vector acts, that moment is acting on the entire piece. It's trying to twist the entire thing. It just happens to be there because of whatever's causing it is mounted there. So what do we decide? A, some are moments about A, because at least two forces drop out of it. Which might be nice, because even though we know these, maybe you're not confident you got them right. So 
you can drop out, they can drop out, and you can still at least get the moment question, question uh, part of it right. Okay, so anything counterclockwise equals anything clockwise. Um, counterclockwise, and that's in fact our unknown. So that's just M. That's what we're trying to figure out. That's M. This is clockwise, so I've got to get to that next. What about this business? Uh, do we got to do this? Go back here. Uh-oh. Kind of, kind of looks like it's hitting. What do we do? You, you can figure out what it's doing, but what's an easier, less haphazard thing to do? Huh? Yeah, break this into its components and just take the two components because it's obvious what those are going to do and what their moments arm, uh, moment arms are. So we'll take that component, that component, get rid of the force, so I cross it out. It's obvious what those two are going to do in terms of the direction. The vertical part is going to do another counterclockwise one, so I want that in there. So that vertical part is 100 sine 30. It's in the same direction as M is, so it goes on the same side without a minus sign. 100 sine 30. That's the magnitude. What's its moment arm? Talking about just this little vertical part and the counterclockwise contribution it makes. What's its moment arm? Have a load for four feet. Couple nods. Remember, it's a sliding vector. We just need the perpendicular distance to its line of action. And that's right there. So four feet. Don't forget that. It's easy to, to leave those that out. The units wouldn't work, but half of you leave the units out anyway. Don't miss any of these forces either. It kind of makes sense to start at one end and march slowly across the, the thing, the, the picture, getting all the pieces to it. Uh, the horizontal component here. What kind of moment, clockwise or counterclockwise? We're doing the counterclockwise side right now. We're doing the counterclockwise side. Does the horizontal piece here supply a clockwise or a counterclockwise type moment? with respect to A. I have a clockwise. Don't forget, if you're drawing clockwise for you, it looks like counterclockwise for me. So that's why you can't do your test by sign language. You have to actually write it down and turn it. Well, let's see. The line of action for it goes that way, goes that way. There's its perpendicular moment arm right there, and you see that it's going to tend to turn the thing clockwise. So, if we're doing the counterclockwise side, we'll get to that in a second. So, uh, don't forget, we got some things to come back to here. We're not done, we're just doing one side. What do we do with this one? Yeah, it's, look at it, right there, it's uh, counterclockwise, it goes on the counterclockwise side in its full glory, 300 foot-pounds. So that right there is the counterclockwise moments. And those can only be balanced by the clockwise moments. So they must be equal in magnitude. They'll be opposite in direction because they're on the other side of the equation. So that's that's where the minus sign went. So now we got uh, uh, 200 pounds at two feet from A. Right? <coughs> Was that a sneeze? Okay. No, no bless you, Mr. Collins. Sneeze is okay. 
that right? 200 pounds at two feet? That's, that's this load, whatever that thing is, a desk or something. Uh, that one we did because it's counterclockwise, but we didn't do this part. 100 cosine 30, 100 pounds cosine 30. You're running out of space at the end here. What's its moment arm? For the horizontal component here, and the clockwise moment it tends to supply. Its moment arm, go back the line of action, perpendicular distance, that's the two feet. So squeeze that in there at the edge of the board. And what else? Uh, that's it. So by doing it this way, clockwise equals counterclockwise, we don't have any minus signs in there. Just makes things a little bit easier. If you don't like doing it that way, don't do it that way. Put them all on one side of the equation with one of the directions being negative. Usually the counterclockwise is positive, and that's our usual. But do it this way, no negatives. It's just an accounting problem now anyway. You're just keeping track of everything that's in the picture. And notice only one unknown. Just the M. So, kind of a complicated looking problem, but if you break it down into little pieces, there ain't much left. And if we get a negative number here, it just means we drew it backwards in the picture. Okay, Alan? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm a little confused about how. The counterclockwise motion moment on the right can still be this added, one? can be added to the counterclockwise motion of okay. the By the direction of the arrow. That's it. That's all you look at. It's a counterclockwise arrow. It counts as a counterclockwise moment. It, no matter where it acts or what it is, it is trying to force this thing that way. No different than than that little horizontal component of the force is trying to force things that way. So what do we get for that? Anybody have it? 47. No, what I got. Yeah, that's what I got too. 70, 73. So be careful with it. If you got time, double check the numbers. The units work. It's got to be foot pounds because it was in there just against foot pounds. Uh, I don't care whether it's foot pounds or pounds foots. It's no different. And now we got the. We now we know what to do. Now we know how to start designing that support so it can maintain uh, those kind of loads at a minimum. Probably design a whole lot more. Okay? Yeah? That's uh, Since it's positive, right, it came out to be positive? Since it's positive, then this choice was correct. Because remember, it was our arbitrary choice of that way that put the M over on this side. Did you have to write out the direction or something? Uh, you, not necessarily, because there's the magnitude, the units, and there's the direction. It's been, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, usually, for these kind of mountings, they're the same one way or the other. But for some reason, though, you might want to make it so it only supplies uh, a moment in a particular direction, because maybe it saves you money by ignoring the other direction if you don't think that's what's going to happen. So you can. Very simply just say counterclockwise, and now we know. If it had a minus sign in it, then below it you'd want to write m equals plus 73, and then put in the direction. Don't put in minus with a direction, because then it's confusing of what you mean. But here, there's 
there's no doubt what that means. They still have a minus sign in there, and I put clockwise or something, then it gets confusing. Let's not be confusing. Okay, good enough for that one. Another one? All right, I'm going to let you do this one. It's a very, very simple one. That's why I trust you with it. And we're going to uh, pay attention to the solution. So here we go. Simple pin and there. And then goes out a bit and then up a little bit like that. 700 millimeters, 400 millimeters. 700 millimeters, 400 millimeters there. Right angle. And the only force on it is a 6 kilonewton force. at some angle, alpha. I want you to find, find the reactions, we'll label this point A, find the reaction at A, either it's magnitude and direction or it's two orthogonal components, the same thing either way. The answer is just AX and AY, that's fine. Uh, also find alpha. There's no moment in the problem, uh, applied or in reaction, because this is a pinned end here. Supplies no moment. Uh, we don't have any applied moment anywhere, so we've got the force equation. Doesn't mean you can't use the moment equation, because it's still not supposed to twist. So, there you go. It's a free body diagram now. If you'd like to, you can break the forces into uh, components on the free body diagram if you want. Uh, whatever you want to do. See, we've got an up force there, so we need a down force here. Right? That makes sense? we got some right force, we need some left force to balance that. So I'm pretty, pretty confident about those. So there's three unknowns, AX and AY and alpha. So three unknowns, three equations. We can handle that. We'll take on the challenge. Bring it on, you say. Doing the same problem if you need to discuss it, go ahead. I won't yell at you. Not for that. Maybe something else. I might yell at you for riding your bike without your helmet. Do that. I might yell at you for smoking. Somebody in here smokes, if I remember. Somebody in here smokes. Oh, Dana, you do? I could see Dana being into heavy smoking and drinking. Oh yeah, it was Jason, man. He was always talking, oh, I'm quitting. We 
miss Jason, don't we? Not much. Nope. He's not watching. We miss you, Jason. Just kidding. Some, some students are just a little bit more of a distraction. I like to be a distraction. So, just find the two things we don't know. Either those two components of A or the magnitude and direction of A, same, same difference, still know what to do with it. And find the angle. Do the same problem, check with each other if you need to. Bill doing okay with it? Yeah, just same, same kind of thing, set up the equations. Be a, a little bit more complicated mathematically just because uh, each equation has two unknowns in it, so you're going to have to solve the system, but yeah, well, that's, that's why we have the best students in here, because they can handle that kind of stuff. So just set up the force, let's see, uh, so AX must equal 6 kilonewtons cosine alpha, alpha is unknown. That's all, that's all you got there. Two unknowns in that one equation, you've got to keep going. Keep going until you have enough equations for the number of unknowns. That's your job as undergraduates. Some of the force in the y direction, they darn a little better be zero. That looks a lot the same. Three unknowns, two equations. You got to keep going. Dag nabbit. Oh, watch your language. No swear engine here. So you can. Uh, Sum the moments about uh, either end, maybe. You got uh, unknowns at either one. So, entirely up to you. Not uh, any obvious choice here of what makes the mathematics easier. So, pick either A or I don't know what's that other side. Maybe B. Maybe. If you wish. Oh, nobody likes B. B for Bill. And that end after Bill. That's the Bill end. You're famous. Awesome. For only 15 minutes. No, not even that. We're almost done. Oh, we're one minute over. I owe you uh, one minute prorated for tuition. All right, so we'll finish this one on Friday. Well, you finish it at home, then let's analyze what we got on Friday. Because this turns out to be a very useful result.